Hello, and just before we start today's video, I would like to mention I have now set up a Patreon page. So for those who are interested and see the cause for why I set this page up, please click the link below in the description. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Leeds have played some excellent football this season. On June the 15th, 2018, Marcelo Bielsa became the Leeds United manager. Marcelo Bielsa's move to Leeds looked like it was on the rocks as it took two full weeks filled with negotiations to get Bielsa over to Leeds. During the first month, we saw little indication of why Leeds tried so hard to get their main man. In his first month, he became the manager of the month in the championship as he was the first Leeds manager to win his first four games taking control. At the end of his first season, the 2018-19 season, he finished third just missing out on automatic promotion. This was a huge achievement for Leeds at this time as Leeds were trying to make their comeback to the top. Many never predicted Leeds to do so well and who knows what could have happened if their season was injury free. His playing style alongside his tactical shape seemed very unconventional. One of his favourite quotes, a man with new ideas is a madman until his ideas triumph. Always looking for new ideas, mainly risk high strategies to win football games. The most popular formation of his is the 3-3-1-3 and the idea is to have the same amount of attackers as you do in defence. Though on paper tactically it might not be set up like this, but in transitions you will see very clear movements from his players to achieve this very strange formation. Marcelo Bielsa is also a very successful manager which is one of the main reasons why I'm going to try and recreate his philosophy. So we are going to try and recreate this madness. Of course there is going to be some slight differences or changes because obviously on the game on Football Manager we cannot get the exact way of playing. But what we're trying to do is to try to get the idea, we're trying to paint the image, the philosophy. And we're going to do a little different again because you know me by now, I like to do things differently every single time. We like to switch things up. I'm actually going to start with the player roles. So first we have the sweeper keeper. Bielsa with Lees is all about risk taking. Though Bielsa is very strict in his approach, he loves his players to understand exactly what he wants but Bielsa also likes to take some risks. You will notice this season and last season, they've had some goalkeeper troubles, goalkeepers making mistakes, they are asked to come off the line, they are asked to play with the ball, to deliver some accurate distribution. So we've gone for the sweeper on the fend. With the two centre-backs, I've gone with the bog standard centre-back roles. With the option with stay wider. The reason why I have stay wider, Bielsa likes his lead centre-backs to push out wide while the DM slots back, making it a back three. But while they're in possession, the centre-backs like to also stretch the play, giving the deep players such as the DM or the goalkeeper options to play the ball out. For the two wing-backs, we've gone for wing-backs on the attack duty. Bielsa's wing-backs are fairly versatile. They can either go out wide or they can come inside with the ball. Unfortunately, we cannot really recreate that. So what we've done to compromise is if we've gone for the wing backs on attack. For the right wing back, I've just have him to shoot less often as he is going to be very attacking. So in the final third, I need him to make the right decisions. With the left back, we've got a sit narrow option. He's a little bit more cautious. We've also got Mark Tyre. The reason why we have Mark Tyre, because I want at least one of my wing backs to close the opposition wingers down 
when they have the ball out wide. The reason why I didn't go for both of them, I did not want to disrupt my defensive shape. For the DM, I've gone with the halfback, the Calvin Phillips role. In real life, he acts almost as a halfback and the deep line playmaker. But of course, again, on foot manager, we cannot select both. In real life, this player is key for build-ups. He collects the ball from deep areas and he plays the more direct pass into centre mid, beating the opposition's traps. For the right hand side of midfield, I've gone for the central midfielder on defend because I want to try and mimic the 3-3-1-3. Free, free, free. Just a little demonstration of the movement I want. With the DM, I want him to slot in as the centre back making that a back three. As he's on defend duty, I want him to come deep which will then make another three. So here we have three and three. This ball winning midfielder, I want him to be here making runs forward into the AM position. For the two wide men in possession, they will get further up supporting the striker and then that will effectively make 3-3-1-3. Three, three, three. So for the ball winning midfielder, I want him in midfield to win the ball back higher up the field. The reason why I don't have get further forward in transition, I have the counter movement. So automatically when we have the ball, he should be looking to make that run forward. For the two wide men, I have two inverted wingers. The right hand side one will be taking more risk, shooting less often and marking tighter. He wants to mark tighter so the opposition has little options when playing out from the back. The reason why I have gone with inverted wingers, I feel these wingers again are very versatile. They can either go out wide or they can come in to support the striker. For the left hand side, I have him passing shorter to keep possession a little bit better. Shoot less often is also there. I have sit narrower to keep shape in the midfield. I have tackle harder and I have mark tighter. And for the striker, I want him to be the complete forward. I want him to be able to chase down, to hold up the ball, to create and also to get forward and break lines. On defensive width, we have narrow. I aim to make the middle the most difficult part to break down. And for the high relentless press to get the ball from the opposition's defence line as soon as possible, we've gone for the higher defence line alongside with a much higher line of engagement. We want to close down the ball as soon as possible. And for that reason, we also have extremely urgent pressing intensity. We also have the get stuck in option. This league will be very, very competitive and very physical. We want to match that. In transition, when possession has been lost and when possession has been won, we've gone for both counter options. As soon as we win the ball back, we want our players to move into the space so everything can happen in a quick and urgent manner. For the goalkeeper distribution, in real life, the goalkeeper distributes it or the defence distribute it to the halfback, which would be Calvin Phillips. Since I don't have that option, I can't do that. The closest I can get is to the centre-backs and I hope the centre-backs will just play it to Calvin Phillips. In possession. Attack and width, I've left it as standards according to the mentality and the mentality is on positive. For approach play, we will pass into space. As soon as we win that ball back and our players move into counter spaces, we want the ball in the space the players are running into. I've got overlap on both flanks. This will make my wing backs more advanced and more attacking. This will allow my wide players to hold up the ball and wait for the fullback to make the overload. Bielsa, alongside a quick attack and play, he also wants possession of the football. So when we're building up from the back, we want to keep possession and we don't want to force things too much. And for that reason alone, we will leave the passing directness on standard, which again will match the positive mentality and the positive mentality aims to knock the ball about. For the tempo, it will be slightly higher, so we'll be doing things in a quicker manner than usual. Whilst Bielsa is a very strict manager, and has very, very strict instructions. He also wants his players to express themselves on the pitch, which is the reason why we have gone with the more expressive option. I also have a B tactic, a second tactic. This is for when the original tactic becomes less effective. One of the reasons why the main tactic may become effective is because other teams may start to counter your tactic. So this one, we have dropped the line of engagement, which would then 
force the opposition to come out a little bit more, which then we can close down, win the ball back and attack those open spaces. We also lower the tempo a little bit. Again, this is to try and get the opposition who will be defending or countering against us to come out a little bit more. For them to take more risks, we want to take less risks. So, let's also talk about the training. As we know, Bielsa is a very strict, very tactical manager. So what I've done is try to build a schedule around that. We're going to concentrate on some fitness, some endurance. We need to improve or we need to have good stamina. We need to have good work rate. We need to have good endurance for this tactic because there is a lot of closing down. On the tactical side of things, Bielsa was a very strict tactical guy. In training, it's all about tactics so i built the schedule around that so on the monday session one is endurance session two tactical tuesday defense shadow play and ball distribution that's for the possession on wednesday is match tactics we're going to learn about the tactics on the second session it's just outfield it's the general outfield training the extra session is for the goalkeeper to learn on his shot stopping we might be giving away a lot of shots due to the high defense line so our goalkeeper need to be good shot stoppers. On Thursday, attack shadow play. Session two is chance creation. We want to create chances. The extra session on that day is one-on-ones. Again, because of the high defence line, we may concede some shots and also some 1v1 situations. And then on the Friday, the session before the match will be attacking movement. On Saturday, match day. On Sunday, it's all about recovery and watching the tapes of the last match. Our session two is fairly similar, but there's no physical. The reason why there's no physical because there's, there's two match days in this week, so we don't want to tire our players out pointlessly. So on Monday, it's tactical and possession. Tuesday, attack and movement before the match. On Thursday, it's match review for the match on Wednesday. And then on Friday, it's attack and shadow play. On Sunday, we'll be recovering the last session of the week. Again, it's the match review, watching tapes of the last match. And finally, the results. We're going to talk about the results. Leeds are promoted to the Premiership. We were the champions. We finished on 111 points, which is very high. It might be the record in this league, I'm not too sure. The top goal scorer was Jean-Kevin Augustin. He was also the highest average rated player. Most assists, Pablo Hernandez with 14 assists, no surprises. Best pass completion, Calvin Phillips. It's impressive because I pictured him having a high pass completion, picking up the ball from deep, especially from the distribution. Jean-Kevin Augustin had the most player of the match awards with seven. Most yellow cards, Calvin Phillips. Breaking up play, making it hard for the opposition. Of course, we'll just get stuck in too. He's going to rack up some yellow cards. With this tactic, we are likely to give away a lot of fouls, get disciplined a lot with the get stuck in and the high press. We just have to accept that. But we played 46. We won 35 of those, that's very high. We drawn six and we lost five. We scored 97 in the league and we conceded 30. So we conceded the least and we scored the most. Again, we ended with a goal difference of 67, which is the highest. If we look at some team stats, like I said, Bielsa likes possession. So we're a possession-based team also, as long with the high press and the risk-taking. So it's surprising to see that we finished second with average possession with the amount of risk-taking we're taking. Of course, we are one of the better sides, so naturally we may have more possession of the ball. But taking all of that in, we've got 59% possession of the ball, only Fulham beats us with that. With the yellow cards, we were fifth, and with the red cards, we sit joint ninth. As you can see here, we scored the most goals with 97. Cross is completed, 384, but we have, we have a low cross completion rate, which means our crossing is not the best and that can be improved. Best pass completion, this is interesting. 88% pass completion. The only team that beats us, Fulham with 89, only 1% higher, so not too much of a difference. They do complete more passes than us though, so that is very impressive on Fulham's side. As you can see here, we're fourth with the passes completed. Chances created, wow. West Brom are sitting up top with 130 chances created. We created 123, but if you look here, we've got the shots on target. 396 alongside the best conversion rate so we've got the best conversion rate whilst taking the most shots it's okay attacking wise we are okay attacking wise fouls against 
Fulham top again. It's a decent season for Fulham. Dribbles per game again. Fulham beat us by one. They make drip. They make 19 dribbles per game on average. We make 18, which is basically the same. It's fairly high. Goals conceded 30. Leads very solid. Conceded from corners one. Very impressive. We conceded one from a direct free kick. We conceded three from indirect free kick. So we're pretty strong set piece wise. Clean sheets. We ended with 22. Brentford ended with 24. Fouls made were eighth. So we make fairly a lot of fouls but not the most to me it's not too much or too many we're still down at 535 tackles one we're 19th we didn't win that much tackles but our ratio was fifth and 87 percent which is fairly high penalties conceded we conceded two which is joint lowest in the league if we go to some player stats we have the second top goal scorer with augustin pablo hernandez is up there with 18 and mateus click with 15 so we had a striker that scored 19, the right winger that scored 18, and a centre mid, on ball winning midfield by the way, scored 15. That, that's, you can't get more impressive from a ball winning midfielder. Minutes per goal, we're second with Augustin, Pablo Hernandez is there, Mateus Click is there too. Augustin again with the shots, shots on target, Augustin, he had a pretty decent season. I started with Banford and then Augustin just took over. I thought Banford was the player, perfect player, but... Pfft, chances he misses chances the conversion rate pablo hernandez is up there as you can see here passes completed calvin phillips alongside kiko casilla ben white is also on the list with adam forshaw chances created pablo hernandez barry douglas and helder costa again we've got multiple players high up on the list dribbles per game no surprise to see helder costa in the list so some of the stats in the squad as you can see augustin with 24 goals in 38 games hernandez a very good season 18 goals 14 assists double figures in both mateus click with 15 goals held costa nine goals 13 assists almost double figures in both jack harrison coming in as a rotated backup player goals seven five assists i'm okay with that Adam Forshaw, our defensive central midfielder, six goals with seven assists. I'm very happy with that. So pretty much decent goals around the team. And assist is pretty much spread out as well. I know some of you guys are interested in some development of some players. So there's here's Jamie Shackleton. I'll put him on passing, um, the passing focus. He did okay with that with a vision on division plus two passing plus one technique plus one as you can see some other things are not so great but overall he's improved if we check his progress overall he started at a two and a half star ended with a three star so now he's basically a good player Mateusz Bogus if we check his attribute changes here you can see off the ball decision and anticipation that's quite clear that I've put him on attacking movement and it's worked very well. This guy will be a very, very decent player in the future. Ian Carlo Poveda, youngster from Manchester City. I just threw him into the first team. He usually starts in the reserves. I put him on attacking movement. Again, you can see the off the ball's gone up. Decision, anticipation. Who else is a young player here? I don't know. Alfie McCullman. Off the ball, decision, anticipation's gone up alongside concentration. You already know what I put him on. Again, attack and movement. If we check that, yes, we did attack and movement. Also, you can see here the training rating of my team. There's no one below a 7.30. There's no one below. Here's some match results. I started well, I usually do. And then a couple games where we dropped off against Swansea at home. Then we, then we lost against Barnsley away. We lost away to Newcastle in the in the um, Carling Cup third round. Disappointing in the league game, we draw two. That's very disappointing. Then we went on a very good run before losing two in a row and then drawing. But check this: we got a two-two draw at home to Liverpool and then away. Just look at that. How cruel! We was up three-two before the 80th minute and then Firmino thought, you know what? I will just score two goals because that's what I do. And we lost 4-3, very narrow. But at Anfield, come on, that's a pretty good result. And then after that, my team just went on a very good run, only losing to Stoke towards the end of the season. But by then, we were very comfortable. And then we ended the season with four clean sheets. But thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe and comment. Leave your recommendations in the comment section. I haven't forgot about the very positive comments. I will reply to most of them again. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I hope you enjoy it too. Until next time, 
Peace.